What is going on everyone? Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. I am happy to be in the state of Michigan now. That's right. I made it. We got sunshine on our first day in Michigan and I'm going to be braving Detroit today. More on that later. First of all, I got to get some good food. So for lunch today, we're gonna try Pete's Garage here in Monroe, Michigan. And of course, I'll be editing and uploading this video with Nomad Internet later. Link in the video description if you need some. It's supposed to be a pretty, pretty quirky place. We're gonna go check out. So look at this place. You can literally sit in a car, and I got here early enough to sit in the trunk of one of these cars. How cool is that? Pete's Garage. Tell you what, that is cool, man. Look at this love the light and people have signed it and they got the dashboard in there what a really cool atmosphere i love it tell you what this is something truly special i really like the effort and quirky here at pete's garage we'll see how the food is when it gets here though i ordered that burger mm -hmm. i gotta tell you this is a pretty cool atmosphere at pete's garage if you're ever near detroit we're about 30 miles southwest of the city of detroit right now oh they got some more cars up there that i didn't see the first time that's pretty cool man all right, my curly fries and cheeseburger has arrived, plain Jane. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna try this sucker out. Oh my God. Sitting in this 54 Chevy really makes this burger taste so much better. <laughs> mm. And by the way, that burger is really, really good. One of the best burgers I've had all, week, all month, all month. Yeah, all, all month. And get my grub on, then we'll hit the road. Fan freaking tastic food! What a great stop, man! But I gotta go change my shirt. I got, I got ketchup on my shirt, and I don't want that to be there all day. I really wanted to wear this hot neon camper van Kevin shirt, but I'm gonna change my shirt. Uh, I gotta do a little more driving and get a little closer to Detroit here. I want to check into my harvest host so I can unhook the car for the day. Low clearance, what does that say? 13.7, we should make it, but just in case, I'm gonna go to the middle where it's a little higher and hold my breath. <laughs> Not all RVs would make that, like, like some fifth wheels. You, you're gonna lose an air conditioner on that one. Just got off of Interstate 275 North, and guys, <laughs> that was the worst interstate I have ever driven on in 11 years. I cannot believe that that road is still open. Like there, there are craters that are four feet diameter craters in it. Damn. I'm gonna have to go clean up my RV when I get parked. That was brutal, Michigan. Holy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's see here, 92 degrees here in Michigan. It is a hot summer day. It's, it's much different farther up north in Michigan. Uh, it's still very, very hot. And I've run my batteries down quite a bit. So I'm gonna fire up the generator here pretty soon because the alternator in the RV doesn't, doesn't keep up with the solar and everything. But this harvest host I'm going to, which is coming up here pretty soon, is uh, one of a kind. My first time staying in a harvest host of this nature. So, I see an RV and I'm guessing, yeah, more on this place in just a minute. It's called Town Peddler Craft and Antique Mall. And they allow two RVs through harvest host. And since this guy's here, I'm gonna guess that they probably want me over here. That's gonna be my guess. But obviously I need to go check in and show them my harvest hosts, give them all my information and find out exactly where they want me to park. So I'll be back here in a little bit and maybe I can even get some, some Mickey Mouse collectible items. Awesome sauce, just got all checked in. They gave me a little piece of paper that I need to put in the front of the windshield. Plus there's some information on other stuff to do around Detroit. This is a safer area. We're about 16 miles from downtown Detroit. So I'll be able to unhook the car and go explore here. Uh, also, I do have the slide out. I'm messing with it again. I'm probably pushing my, my luck just a little bit, but. And stick around to the end of the video. I'm gonna go in the store right now with my phone and see if I can find any Mickey things. They have crafts, they have antiques, they have 
have thrift stuff and flea market stuff. So I'll put that at the end of the video. We're gonna uh, jump ahead, unhook the car and go hang out in Detroit first. All right, and kitty kitties, you need to be good for a little bit. This is Jax's favorite spot to sit right underneath the air conditioner vent. And when it's really hot, I like to open this, which bypasses all these little individual, and, and it directs the AC right down here. And I, I, I like to think that Jax and Tara are pretty smart and, and they know that, not that it's too warm in here or anything, but I gotta keep those kitties comfortable until I get a little bit farther north where the temperatures aren't in the 90s. So let's go have fun in Detroit right now. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun in there searching for Mickey stuff, guys. I cannot wait to show you at the end of the video everything that I'm gonna show you I have never seen in my life and I may never see again. Man, my collection is awesome. I'm gonna go do Detroit now. I'm gonna stop at a couple places. I actually had some advice from one of my Patreon members over there, uh, Brian from the Haley family on, on YouTube, uh, told me a couple things that are right up my alley. So we're gonna go look at some fun stuff in Detroit right now. All right, definitely not the best part of town here in Detroit. Not a big, uh, not, not a 3D cone, but it's a, it's a 2D cone. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The roads are still pretty tore up too. Like, it's pretty bad all over Detroit. I don't know where they put all their tax money, but it is not into these roads. Smart car is pretty good. I mean, it's so small and narrow that I can I can avoid them fairly well. <laughs> They're just all all over the place here. Now, we'll get parked up here and won't spend too much time here in this neighborhood. Doesn't seem like a bad neighborhood. It's actually very very quiet here. I'm trying to figure out how to get to it. I can see it. Go through the alley, I guess. All right, Brian, you were right. This is um, a strange one. This is definitely off the beaten path here. It is also very, very colorful. Get a load of this art installation here behind an alley. Look at this place. <laughs> there is a sign here. It says, Ham Tramac Disneyland lives. Yep, they're looking for donations to preserve this place back here. I don't understand how they can use the name Disneyland, though. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, there are some lights on top of that one. Man, this is just so weird, though. A lot of time and effort went into all this. Look at the little upside-down kitty there. There's your address, but this is an alley. So I think it's like a fake address. I don't know. It says no trespassing there. But this gate's open. Should we go? Knock, knock. I don't see anybody to talk to. This is pretty weird, huh? It's art, guys. Are we getting flashbacks of Slab City yet? Look at the windmill. Look at the spaceship and the rockets. Little chopper up there. Oh my gosh, I have to peek through here. I can always just apologize if I'm not allowed to be back here, but I'm pretty sure the public's allowed to see all this. A little TV with the kitty cat in it. This is wild. Just wild. That heat is starting to get to me a little bit. You know, at least I got air conditioning in the car and we can find some shade and everything. Pretty interesting. I don't know what they're doing with it, except trying to preserve the wood, is what they're saying. Even the helicopter's made out of wood. Yeah. There you go, official. Ham Tramac Disneyland. Okie dokie. I do love all the colors. I definitely like how flashy and colorful it is. It's right up my alley. <laughs> There's a Tasmanian devil. Okay, well, don't say I never take you guys places. <laughs> all right, pretty original. Aw, I almost missed the, oh boy, somebody's gonna get copyright flagged. <laughs> All right, the car's still here. The wheels are still on it. I'd call that a good day in Detroit. <laughs> well, should we venture farther into Detroit? Should we, should we risk it? Yeah, let's stop at least one more spot. All right, now I don't know anything about it, but it, we are here at the Heidelberg Projects in Detroit. I don't really know what to expect, but um, I will keep my eyes open here. <laughs> it looks like a bunch of neat art like this huge strand of car hoods. It's like Cadillac Ranch, but a little more ghetto, you know? 
What in the world? A boat full of stuffed animals and toys. A pile of shopping carts. Whoa, yeah. look at Shoe Mountain here. There's a, there's a glove in there too, but just a bunch of shoes. It's art, guys. Here's the main booth here. If you want to freeze the frame to read all that, welcome to the critically acclaimed Heidelberg Project. Yeah, so at least now we know it's <laughs> critically acclaimed. There, There's the uh, trophy to confirm that. You know, sometimes somebody else's garbage is somebody else's art. And it was just like this in Slab City. You know, you would just have walls and walls and walls of junk that can also be interpreted as art. Look, there's like burnt up house mixed in with all this stuff. Look at the beams of the house. And they just try to cover it up with all this awesome stuff. Barbecue pit there. Oh, there's even a, a basement and I see, I see Santa Claus down there. Oh, that is creepy. Kind of stinks too. It smells like a recent fire, actually. This old phone booth here. Hmm. Okay. He did tell me that I can take pictures and video and link him on social media, the Heidelberg Project there. They're on Facebook and Instagram, I guess, also. But nothing's for sale. <laughs> Polka dot house. Oh my gosh, look at that old traffic light and the faded Mickey Mouse. Wearing a mask and some Mardi Gras beads. <laughs> wow. You got an old Winnebago RV on top of there. I wonder what his neighbors think. <laughs> Okay, do not tell me that this guy has not been to Slab City. Look, he's got all the old TVs with stuff written on them. Wow. That's pretty neat. I like that. There's a whole field more. And I'm definitely seeing a common theme of clocks. There's a clock. There's another clock over there. Here's the mountain of kids' toy cars and stuff. Yeah, and then uh, shoe fence here. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know guys, this is a strange one. I'm gonna head back and check in on Jack's. No, I wanna go see the water real quick and then we'll go check on, then we'll check in on the kitties. I think they're just yelling over there, having a good time. This, this is the first time I've ever felt uncomfortable in quite some time, more, more than a year. Probably St. Louis was the last time where I was really itching to get back to the RV. So, you know, just plus I'm sweating and I don't like, like being by myself. <laughs> Get back on the road here. Ah, oh, shade. Well, this has been an interesting tour of Detroit, Michigan. I don't know, I'm probably doing everything wrong, blah, blah, blah. Still smiling, still having fun. The weather's nice. Well, this is nice. They got a little playground in the style of a sunken ship with treasure for the kiddos to play. Oh, beautiful. Got the uh, Detroit river out here man i miss having lakes usually every summer i'm up in the northwest and i'm i'm floating the river like every weekend by now i don't know these rivers and i don't have any friends up here that want to go float so i don't know got a bunch of boats out here and there's downtown detroit the taller buildings over there but yeah i'm gonna go get some ice cream i need some ice cream right now hey what field is that is that where the detroit Tigers have lost more games than any other MLB team. I don't know who actually plays there. <laughs> oh, weird. So this Dairy Queen is not a drive-through. It's pickup only. Well, okay, I'll have to park it and go get in line. A little different. Okay, that was the weirdest Dairy Queen I've ever been to in my life. Um, it's all solid, huge, like glass that has a magnet on it, and it's like a it's like a Sally Port door. So you hand them your your card after you pay, and then you go to the other window. They have to tell you what you got through the megaphone. I didn't want to film because there's a bunch of people over there. And then they have to unlock the cage, and then you open this thing and grab your ice cream. And I got a a mint mocha mulatte, which is pure white. So I'm gonna check it right now. It's right. But it doesn't look right. Yep. Oh, oh. Really, Eric? We already had to change our shirt once today. Let's not do this again. This is melting quick. All right, let's head back to the RV. My sweet chillin' babies. My dude. My dudette. How you doing, baby girl? Didn't mean to scare you there. 
You're so jumpy all the time. Relax, man. You're part of the family, girl. Just flop around like Jax. You'll, you'll get the hang of it, man. Missed you guys. I sure did. I need to show them what I got. I got stuffs. Yeah. Look at my cute fuzzy butts. One fuzzy butt, two fuzzy butt. <laughs> All right, the Mickey finds. Everything on this table I have never seen since I've been collecting Mickey stuff. I'm going through it real quick. Little Mickey uh, tambourine, I guess. Yeah, with conductor Mickey there. This is a, a vintage, I think you call it like, like, like a baby rattler. It's pretty weird. I mean, it's pretty, pretty unique and pretty old. Uh, shampoo from the 90s. You would find this at the resorts in the 90s, at the parks. Speaking of shampoo, this plastic figurine right here, if I can do it one-handed, yep, yeah, you turn his ears, and he's a shampoo dispenser. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Uh, this is just a strange, weird wax Mickey. Yeah, I, I am worried about it melting, so I may put it in a plastic bag and put it in the fridge until I get it to climate controlled base camp because it's kind of cool. This one, I literally have no idea what it used to do, guys, because doesn't it, isn't it just weird? It's like a bobblehead, and it looks like Mickey's a little chunky. You know, it's definitely pretty unique, and there's no numbers or displays on it. Also, this is a play school. It's that thick cardboard material, and... Wait a minute, is there two in there? No, just one, okay. But anyway, these, these are like puzzle pieces. You take out the ears and his face and everything and put it back together. And it's in a nice little plastic protective case there. And of course, oh my gosh, I actually had one of these guys. I really, really did. Little Mickey bouncy ball. You'd sit on him and you'd put your hands around his ears and it's got a tire inflation valve right there. I put a lot of pressure on it and it doesn't seem to have any holes. It just needs some new air. I mean, I guarantee you will never find this again, Eric. Watch, I'm gonna find it like next month, but I don't think so. It's a pretty good Mickey haul. All right, Jax just got done using the boat box. You want me to clean that? Yeah, I better clean the boat box. All right, well, my Harvest Host neighbors aren't back yet. The sun has just set, so it has cooled down to a nice, comfortable 91 degrees outside. I'm not kidding you, it's still 91 degrees outside, yeah. So I'm gonna take the rest of the night off here, guys, after I edit the video, and I actually have more coming from Detroit. I'm gonna brave it at least one more day in Detroit and do some different stuff. There's some some stuff I, I, I absolutely have to do. Um, I'll be safe, and I'll get back to here in a few days from Detroit. You guys have a good one. Thanks for watching. Jack's turn, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.